This week we're going to think about comparing groups in a new way by quantifying the different sources of variation. So in this example we have an experiment where participants were randomly split into two groups. One read a short generic text about the effectiveness of a drug. The other group read the same text but with a basic bar graph, just mirrored the text, it didn't provide any new information. And then afterward the participants rated the perceived effectiveness on a drug on a nine point scale. So the overall mean, um, looking at everybody who was in the study was 6.475, that was the average effectiveness rating. In the group that saw the graph, it was a little bit higher, 6.833, and in the group that didn't see a graph, it was a little bit lower, 6.129. So we're going to start off by talking about the sum of squares total. So the sum of squares total is looking at the difference between yi, um, which we're using to represent an individual rating, so this is like one person and how um, effective they thought the drug was, and comparing that to the overall mean. So the mean of all the participants in the study. So in this case our overall mean was 6.475, so I'm going to mark that on the graph here. And we're thinking about how far each of these points are from the overall mean. So you can think about for each point in the data set, not just each value, but each individual point, how far is that from the overall mean? The uppercase sigma here is telling us that we would sum all of those values up. So sum of squares total is just telling us overall how much variation is there from the mean. And each sum of squares also comes with its own degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom for a sum of squares calculation is the number of independent values in the sum. So let's take a quick detour here as we talk about the degrees of freedom. So let's imagine that you're in a class where there are three tests and you made a 70 on the first test and an 80 on the second test and we don't know yet what your grade is for test three. But if we know what the average of your test is, you know your test average is an 80, then the test three grade isn't really free. It's not really independent, right? Because there's only one value that could give you a test average of 80. It has to be a 90 here. So there's only actually two degrees of freedom here. Because once you know two of the test grades, assuming that you know the test average, then the other one is not really free. And it turns out that the degrees of freedom is always going to be the sample size minus one. So like here we had three tests, but one of them wasn't really free to vary, and so we have two degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom for sum of squares total is n minus one. By the way, you've actually seen all of this before if you saw the formula for a standard deviation in your first class. So the formula for a standard deviation is the sum of squares total divided by the degrees of freedom for total, and then all of that under a square root. So let me write it out and see if it looks a little bit more familiar. So it's looking at the sum of the differences between the individuals and the group mean squared all over n minus one. So a lot of times we talk about the standard deviation as like the typical distance between a point and the mean, um, but this is actually how it's calculated in terms of the sum of squares total. Now let's look at the sum of squares error. So we're still looking at the individuals here, yi represents an individual rating, but now instead of comparing it to the overall mean, now we're going to compare it to the group mean. So in this case, text only had a mean of 6.129, so we'll put the mean here. And the text and graph had a mean of 6.83, so we'll put the mean there. And instead of comparing to the overall mean, we're comparing each point now to its group mean. So we want to know how much do these points vary around the group mean. And it would be the same kind of thing for the other group. Another way to think about this is that you can take the actual value for each person, the actual rating they gave, minus what you would have predicted based on the group they were in, right? So it makes sense that we could predict somebody's rating based on the group average. So this is looking at the actual minus the predicted. Um, we're squaring that because if you were to just add them all up for actual minus predicted, it would end up summing up to zero. Um, but we're going to square them to get a sense of how far these individuals vary from their group means.
Sometimes we say that sum of squares error is measuring the variation within the groups. So the within groups variation. And I think that makes sense just sort of looking at this picture. We're not comparing to the overall mean. We're comparing each rating to its corresponding group mean. So we just want to know about the variation within the groups. We may also say that the sum of squares error measures the unexplained variation. And that's because we don't have any explanation for why within these groups, some people's ratings were higher than the mean and some people's ratings were lower. Um, with no extra variables, we don't have any way to explain that. Um, so this is just error. This is something that the model is not accounting for. And each sum of squares has its own degree of freedom. So again, we'll start with the sample size. Earlier we subtracted one because given the constraint of the overall mean, uh, we lost one degree of freedom. Here we're actually calculating two group means, right? So we're gonna lose two degrees of freedom based on that constraint. So more generally, I'm just gonna put n minus g, where g is the number of groups. So in this particular case, um, we only have two groups, just text only and text and graph, and so it would be n minus two. The last one is sum of squares groups. So here we're comparing the group means so for graph or no graph, we've each got a group mean, and we're comparing that to the overall mean. So it's a little bit tough to see here because it's all pretty close together, um, but I'm gonna draw, this is the mean for text only, so this is 6.129. This is the mean for text and graph, so this is 6.83. So I've got my group means, and then I'm gonna compare that to my overall mean. So I just want to know what is the distance here and what is the distance there. But we're not just adding up those two squares, we're adding this up over all of our observational units. So like we would take the mean for the text only group, 6.129, minus the overall mean, 6.475, and we would square that but then we would want to repeat that for the number of observations in the text-only group. So the text-only group had 31 observations, and then we would add it up, we would sum it all up, and do the same thing with the text and graph group. So here the average for the text and graph group was 6.833, and we're looking at the difference between that and the overall mean, 6.475, and we're going to square that, and repeat it for how many observations were in that group, which was 30. For this one, we're looking at the distance between the means, um, and so we can say that this measures the between groups variation. So how big is the difference between the groups? Um, or sometimes you hear this one called the explained variation because we do have an explanation for why these two groups are different, right? In this case, they're not hugely different. It doesn't seem like there's a very strong association there, um, but we do have an explanation based on the data for why the text and graph group is a little bit higher than the text only group on average. And again, each sum of squares has its own degrees of freedom. Here, we only have two means, and we also know the overall mean that only one of them is actually free to vary. So the degrees of freedom is just going to be g minus 1. In this case, it would be 2 minus 1 or just one degree of freedom. So we looked at the overall amount of variability in the sample, and we've broken it up into the variability between groups, the part that can be explained based on the explanatory variable, and the variation within groups, the part that is unexplained.